So this sixth movement brings one more time the idea of two sequences in a row within the same sequence of movements. So in this time it comes from Ichiro Hagai, or Ichiro Ruri, as some say, like this. And then we have some tricks in order to uh, keep our balance and to uh, not make it easy for him to unbalance us. So there are three main, main tricks, three main um, inner movements within our whole body we could do that will turn our center of gravity for us and against him. So first thing we should do is be able to feel something which is not visible uh, in some particular time. So if he's here, we obviously cannot see him, although we could try to hear him, but we should try to practice three tricks uh, which give us the condition to first. As soon as we feel this touch, as soon as our peripheral vision sees something which is usually broader coming from this angle, we, we bend our knees and uh, our toes, they do like this. They try to root us, they try to make us more stable and more grounded. So this is the first thing that, that happens. Uh, in practice, if you feel that naturally, you have a contraction in this part. you are here, and then you do this, automatically this and this. It's, uh, these, these muscles, they get contracted and they help you, they assist you, uh, making you more stable, more balanced. So this is the first thing which your body should do automatically. So second thing is, you see, um, he, has, he has this pressure area around my, my chest and my arms. And uh, if I take my, my balance in a Shizen posture, in a, a natural posture, a Shizen, I might will have this. And so our center of mass is more or less in this part of our body. And as we have uh, symmetrical parts in our body, it will be also more or less in the center of our head, of our, of our space, of our volume here, the volume of our body. So here we are. So if he, if he puts his pressure in this area, in this high, you notice that because he's rooted, because he's stable here, here, we'll have this, this angle of force which will, uh, will make us turn, us, will make us rotate like this, like this. You see, it's not a straight pressure. It makes a circle. It tries to bend us. So for us to, to stand, for us to maintain our, our stable position here, we should add this, we should add this, uh, this light angle in the base of our hips, of our spine, like this. So, so if you try to do this with us, and for us to compensate for that, we'll do like this. It's a slight movement, so uh, if someone does not know or if someone has not studied, it might, you know, and if you have a clean movement, just the amount of, of movement that you need to compensate for his pressure, um, it might not be that easy to be seen. So, so let's review. First is toes and knees, second is this angle, and third is, well, we have now the lower, the in part of our body, more stable and more up to what he's doing now. If he, if he manages to, to close his entire volume here, I mean, if he can contract both his hands strongly and tightly, and his forearms and arms, and his chest, and his scapulas, he will have great pressure here. He will have um, a sense of a leverage, a very powerful leverage here. And so for us not to get uh, tight here, we will do, as soon as we feel, as soon as we see, very quickly like, like this, and as soon as we feel his touch, this. This. So if we take it close to here, it's this. Well, so I can get this. This. Your scapulas, you try to set apart like this. Do not try. A common mistake here is to try to to use your, your shoulder, these muscles here, 
However, in particular this, you notice that you can't use you can't use these these muscles here, and because you see, you don't have uh, the power of any lever here. You can't you can't use any kind of leverage here, so it gets difficult, and uh, you'll get tired eventually. So what you should do is use this part first. You should use this and this from your spine outward. So when these three, these three movements, these, these three adjustments come in the same time, he'll find it much more difficult for him to, to keep it straight, to keep it uh, tough. So as soon as we did this, we open our legs a bit, more or less following our shoulders. And now with this hand, with our left hand, we grab his right arm like this. And so now we are very tight to him. And now we, we, we get lower like this, and this arm gets here. So he stands up. And now let's go to the second part of our movement. For the second our movement, he stands up. And he comes one more time with a, a mawashkiri. So here we have to avoid his kick. And uh, there are some there are several ways, several types of back we could use for not getting hit and entering into his smile into his, his, his guard. Now, we should notice that the most important thing is to keep your, your body uh, protected. So, for this, when he comes, this left arm, he protects us like this. Or should go in our palm outward. And uh, we should always try to use the points of our body. Points, 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 as we have seen in the previous movements. So, for this sequence, what to do is, we will try to find the lighter very tight in this empty space, you know what I mean? In this empty space we have here. Because if you start to think and to analyze what's the danger of this kind of, of giddy, of attack, you'll see that okay, if you take this, this cross, for instance, when it comes, if we divide in the most simple way we can the volume around him, you'll see that we have this half and this half, as, as if it was a sphere, we could think. So when he comes, when he comes to kick, all this volume, it's hot, it's red, it's dangerous, 